Shannon, one of the naturalists with Calvert County Parks. Today we're here at Bisco Gray Heritage Farm to learn how to use a base plate compass, which is what we use in all of our compass programs here at the park. You might think it's kind of silly to learn how to use one of these, but the truth of the matter is, is that, you know, we don't always have great signal or your battery might die on your phone. So it's really a good skill to learn. Plus setting up a compass course can be a fun way to do a treasure hunt for a birthday party, you know, have your scout group earn one of their badges, you know, maybe even put a different spin on an Easter egg hunt for older kids. So I'm hoping that this video will be helpful to you before you come out to one of our compass programs or if you want to set up one on your own and have never used a base plate compass before. All right, let's go have some fun. Let's talk about the parts of a base plate compass so that way when I'm referring to these terms later on you'll know what I'm talking about. So this plastic part is called the plate, the base plate. These arrows coming out along the base plate are called the direction of travel arrows. Uh, we have the compass housing, which is this round part, um, and it will turn. We'll talk about that later. We have our cardinal directions, the north, south, east, and west on the compasses. We also have the um, degrees, so you see various numbers on there that are between north, south, east, and west. And those come in handy because inevitably um, an object will not be exactly north or east and so on. So you can use the degrees to give direction. There's also the magnetic needle, which always points north. Um, this one's off a little bit because you can see there is a bubble inside. So we would probably discard this compass because it wouldn't be as accurate. Um, the magnetic needle we might call red Fred um, because there's kind of a rhyme here that will help you. It, this part we call the shed because it looks like a shed. Here's another version of the shed and then um, on this particular compass it looks like two parallel lines and, um, and the reason why we call the magnetic needle red fred is later on in the instructions we're going to put red fred in the shed now that you've learned the parts of a compass are you ready to start learning how to use it so first of all you're going to hold the compass flat with the direction of travel arrow pointing away from you and then you're going to turn the compass housing in the direction that you want to go. So let's say you want to go west. So you would line it up so that the W is in line with the direction of travel arrow. Okay. So we have our W lined up. We want to go west. We're going to hold the compass flat. And then here's the hard part. You're going to slowly turn your body until Red Fred is in the shed. Okay, you don't want to turn the compass, you want to turn your body. So here I go. All right, now I am facing west. So it looks like our barn here at Bisco Gray is to our west. So here's what that looks like from a different angle. So we had turned our compass housing so that W for west is lined up with the direction of travel arrow. And then we're going to slowly turn until Fred, our magnetic needle, we put Fred in the shed. And there it is. Okay. And we are facing west, which is where the barn is. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, let's try it again. This time we'll use some degrees. Let's choose 140 degrees southeast. Alright, so I'm going to spin my compass housing until 140 degrees is lined up with the direction of travel arrow. And then again, the hard part is to slowly turn your body until Red Fred is in the shed. I'm 
holding my compass flat. My elbows are locked at my side. And right about there. So that is 140 degrees southeast. And it looks like I'm pointing towards the gate right here at the park. Congratulations, you've now learned how to use a base plate compass. Easy peasy, right? Now let's get out there in our yards and parks and have some fun. All right, now we're going to run through an example compass course right in somebody's backyard. This is proof that you can do this right at home. These clues were left right here on the patio where I usually sit down and have my morning cup of coffee. So let's see what this is all about. Good morning. Guess where we're going today? Follow the clues. All right, so our first clue says, start at the door and find a treat near Sad Myrtle, 300 degrees northwest. So before I go over to the door, I'm going to get my compass set up. I'm going to spin my compass housing so that 300 degrees, where are you 300? There you are. So the 300 degrees is lined up with the direction of travel arrow. So I'm going to walk over here to the door and turn so that red Fred is in the shed. There we go. Okay, so something in front of me is Sad Myrtle. Let's see. Sad Myrtle out there in front of me. Ah, okay. There we go. I see it across the way. There's a, a sad little crepe myrtle that has had the top chopped out. So we'll go over there and see if we can find our next clue. All right, here we go. I hope I don't make you dizzy. All right, sad myrtle. Where is our clue? Oh, I see it. I see it. It's a banana. This banana does not grow in crepe myrtles. Our second clue wants me to take a bath, ha ha, at 120 degrees southeast. So we'll start there. All right, so first I need to turn the compass housing so that 120 degrees is lined up with the direction of travel arrow. And then I'm gonna put Red Fred in the shed. Slowly turn till Red Fred is in the shed. There we go. And take a bath, huh? Okay, out in front of me, I see a little bird bath there and a garden hose. So that might be where our next clue is. So I'm going to start with a bird bath because it's closer. Aha! Wow, that blends in really well. Okay, so I found some Gatorade in the bird bath. That's our next clue. All right, for number three, I need to look for something that is my favorite color in the East. So this is definitely a situation where you need to know your audience. So someone has to know that I like the color blue. So let's see, let's turn our compass housing so that East is lined up with the direction of travel arrow. We're standing here next to the bird bath. All right, and then Need to hold the compass in front of me and put Red Fred in the shed, and then I should be facing east. Okay, now I need to look for something blue. Ah, okay, there is a blue, one of those gazing ball kind of things over there. I bet that's where the next clue is. So let's go, go find out. Aha, behind the blue gazing ball. Ooh, it looks like some candy. That's a fun clue. Ooh, someone even put Reese's in there. Gotta love that. Yum. All right, for our fourth and final clue, if it rains, you might need this thing directly south. So let's turn our compass housing. Oh, until south is lined up with the direction of travel arrow. And then we'll go back to our spot next to the gazing ball and put Red Fred in the shed. All right, here we are at the gazing ball. All right, I have south lined up with the direction to travel arrow. I'm going to turn 
so that red Fred is, wow, that didn't take very long, is in the shed. Okay, something that I'll need if it rains to our south. Okay, what would that be? Ah, I see some patio umbrellas. That's more for sun, but rain, but we'll see. We'll go over there and check that out. Let's see, do you guys see anything? Aha, I see it. There's something hidden between the two umbrellas. Ooh, it's one of my favorite things. Binoculars, that's awesome. Oh, we are going to Flag Ponds to do some birding. Nice. All right, so I'm all set to go to Flag Ponds. I have my binoculars, something to drink to stay hydrated. Something good for me. Oh, what happened to my sad banana? And uh, I, I still have my bag full of candy, but I already ate the Reese's. All right, thanks for having fun with me. All right, now you guys can do it too.